This morning's session is Open Education Cooperative EduCoop with Alexandra. And Alexandra, if you can take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Uh, so today um, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about um, our organization and also about our um, uh, about our uh, Open Education Cooperative because I just want to share our method and show uh, how we are working with teachers and how we um, we help them to cooperate each other, but also to cooperate with um, different organizations. And uh, just um, we are just thinking sh more about open education than open education resources. And I guess this is uh, this is just good practice that I really, really like to show. And uh, for me, the best way to show this is also uh, uh, feel it or just do it. That's why I was thinking about uh, workshops more than about just uh, presentation, because in, <laughs> in presentation it's very simple. It's, you have this group and then you, uh, then you make open education resources <laughs> and that's it. And uh, it's, uh, it's very nice just to feel how, how we, are, uh, we are making. Um, I will um, share, uh, share my screen. Um, with you with my presentation um, yeah. it's here and it's not yeah. okay just one second i need just one more second uh, to make it bigger okay yes so our um um, our initiative is called EduCoop, and it's a short way to say Open Education Cooperative um, in Polish, because I didn't say that I'm from Poland, from Warsaw, from Centrum Cyfrowe, and this is an organization uh, which, wor which works with, um, uh, with education. Uh, with uh, culture uh, institutions and also uh, with policy. And these are our three uh, main uh, main issues that we are um, uh, taking care of in our very small organization. Now we have twelve people, so there's a lot um, going on, on about open uh, openness uh, in Poland. Um, but I'm I'm working in education. I'm working mostly with K uh, twelve schools and uh, try to share this idea of openness. And that's the, how this uh, cooperative uh, started with this idea that our schools are very closed. And why? <laughs> we have free, uh, free textbooks. We have also in Poland, a very nice uh, open uh, online textbooks, eBooks. Uh, for uh, um, for whole school from uh, um, uh, primary and secondary uh, and we don't have secondary now so primary and high school and um, so we have like all of this uh, in Poland but still this education it's not open as we are understanding this and I ho I think not only only we, we yes we have open education resources but there is no uh, maybe not, not no but not enough sharing uh, not enough um, conversation not enough uh, um, creation uh, of uh, open education resources we really I, I really believe that this uh, resources should be uh, perfectly fit or just good enough fit, but still to to uh, publish to students and not just this huge textbooks, ebooks that uh, they're just for everybody. So probably it's not good for anybody uh, without changes. And <laughs> this is uh, uh, this beginning of uh, of our uh, uh, of our story. Um, because uh, we are in a small group and we had time to uh, introduce ourselves before, uh, I will skip this, uh, this let's get to know each other, but maybe <laughs> this is also the time when you want to say something about uh, your uh, experience. Um, I just ask, if not, we can, uh, we can do this uh, later. 
Okay. And but I want to show this very nice picture. Uh, as you can see, we have in our uh, in uh, our project a lot of pictures, and they are on CC BY. So uh, I will put also them on the uh, on our um, on my presentation. Just you can use it. They are very very cute. Uh, yeah. So I start with our uh, Edu story and how it uh, how it start with this. Um, with this idea that the education is not so open that it should be. And also we had this idea that uh, teachers are very long, lonely in Poland. They really want to, uh, if they really want to uh, make some changes or want to uh, be better, create something, they don't have any, any good uh, leaders and good uh, uh, networks um, and Probably they are not so used to uh, cooperate with uh, um, with uh, another teachers. Because there's many reasons why, but <laughs> but that's just just the truth how it, how it works. And this was also very very important for us to um, to show them that this cooperation uh, is very very important. And I was thinking yesterday about this because this is uh, uh, Alfred North Whitehead and he's a mathematician. And when we started three years ago, our uh, cooperative, uh, we started with um, mat mathematicians, uh, with teachers that teach mathematics. Uh, because the, the, we, we also start, yeah, we show you later, we start with little, little research just to get now where is the biggest gaps in uh, in uh, materials and in, in resources? And then we we invite teachers to uh, to our project, and we start with mathematicians, and then we figure out that this uh, uh, this mathematician um, this was, was the day in, uh, the year when he came to the pu public domain, so we could use his his work. And he's not only mathematician, but he's also he was uh, uh, also um, a teacher and he really really believe in education and uh, with open education and there are some works um, of him uh, about this and I forgot about him but I think he's like this good spirit of our uh, uh, of our um, project and I like to think about him sometimes uh, about uh, yeah the that there, there, this this thinking about uh, open education began not three years ago, not ten years ago, and not twenty years ago, but uh, but way way back, and uh, and that's why I put him here, and I, I try to uh, to remember about him. Yeah, so this cooperation is because our uh, idea of this project they have this four. Uh, um for values i guess i can call this that that we we work on it and this the cooperation is one of this this open education resources is second we really, really like to talk also about adventures uh, and i will tell you why um but this cooperation is the one and the first and the most important that uh, when we invite our teachers to work with us it's not normally small group like 15 this year and then we divide them to groups and they're from whole Poland they didn't know each other maybe sometimes online but normally they didn't know each other but we don't want them to work alone we want them to work with groups with uh, uh, to cooperate so uh, and it's hard <laughs> most of the time it's hard because they're not used to cooperate and they are very uh, very intelligent they are very, they're very focused on uh, on goal and uh, and that's uh, that's mean it's not always uh, easy for them to to make something not in their own way and we are we really uh, uh, like this process and like to uh, to observe this process and how they change it during it so this learning part it's another one uh, that because we invited these teachers and then we tell them okay make some open education resources and on this first um, edition three years ago with mathematicians on the beginning we have a lot of questions okay we, we we can do this but we you need to pay us 
if we want, if you want some uh, resources. And I first say, why? Why? It's, this is a project. <laughs> we don't pay for this. And but they write. It's not like you can uh, you can use this work, this teacher work, with, without anything. Uh, and then we need then that this was moment when we changed our communication that this these resources are just the beginning it's not the, the most uh, important thing it's just the way we want to sh uh, show something and not the uh, the result and that this process is imp there is is important and uh, and that's why this uh, this learning part it's so important and we put a lot of workshops for these teachers and uh, about uh, we teach them about uh, com um, digital competences because that is very important in open education in this uh, this school uh, uh, level it's very important to to show different tools and uh, and also different methods how to uh, teach online and how to teach with uh, new technologies so this learning and also how to cooperate it's it's, uh, it's a different part and we also um, do this so we have cooperation we have learning and then we have this adventure because we truly believe that you need to have fun when uh, when you work because life is hard, <laughs> it's hard enough that if you spend so many time in your work, we you, you need to have fun. And that's why we try to make this, um, this workshop fun, but also we try to explain to teachers, if you use this, uh, this close textbooks, there is no fun. You, you, you read this, you use this, and that you, you even sometimes you didn't care. But if you uh, create, with your own, with your students, with your colleagues, some uh, uh, some materials. That's where when this fun starts, and uh, when this adventure starts. And I know it's it took times, and it's uh, not so easy for uh, um, for teachers. And it's like the path that you <laughs> you can choose, but you don't have to. But this is why what. Uh, um what we are trying to um to achieve and on the end we have this openness that uh, well, we have a lot of conversations not only with uh, our teachers but in uh, uh but generally with teachers and uh, with organizations in poland in warsaw about openness and why it's so important to to create open education resources and also why it's so important to teach in open uh, way okay and this is uh, this is how this process works we start with research as i said um we had these three editions first was about um uh, mathematics and we uh, create open education resources for mathematics then we have this uh, we have this main topic and uh, then we create workshops but uh, the clue is we we don't have this workshop is for weekends for uh, yeah, it's for weekends normally but first we need to meet this uh, these teachers so we meet them we have this first workshop that we uh, get to know them and then we create rest of uh, uh, of this time because we really want to uh, to fit and to to make these workshops very um, specific and very uh, very useful for this uh, group uh, for the specific group of teachers not for everyone uh, yes yeah. so we start with uh, mathematics the second uh, was for um, uh, um, home homeroom so for uh, some psychologists and uh, some um, some school issues and this uh, this time this this year we finished with a, a climate crisis 
And I, I just uh, want to share that this time is very emotional. This climate crisis is very em emotional for our teachers and for our students. And uh, yeah, I think it's very important to use also this, uh, this openness and this open education resources to talk about very important issues. Uh, yeah. So we have this research with uh, these workshops, and on the end we have also online course. It's uh, it's open. It's for everybody. Now we are translated it also, also to English, and uh, and also methodology. We are still working on it because we want we really want to have it perfect. So it's not re ready yet, um, but uh, it it will be and will be uh, ready to take and to use. Uh, and also we have. Uh, on the other hand, uh, teacher uh, network, but now we have bigger uh, network of librarians because we also made uh, online course for uh, librarians and uh, and now we have bigger, uh, big, quite big network of uh, librarians and uh, there are libra uh, librarians from schools, but also from um, um mm, public librarians li libraries and uh, university libraries so it's very um, diverse uh, group that it's quite active yeah and here it's there's some links to uh, to our resources i will put this um, presentation also uh, on my session so you can just uh, look at them later mm. Yes, so uh, this is the end of my presentation. Maybe this is time if you have any question about this method, uh, I will be happy to answer. Can I, can I ask, so I have two comments, um, if I may. <laughs> so the first one was in relation, when you were saying that teachers are very lonely and um, they don't really collaborate with each other. Does that happen as well in their own schools? So see, for example, if you have two teachers uh, who are teaching, I don't know, mathematics, are they still not talking to each other in order to prepare their classes together? Um, yes, that's very sad what I'm going to say, but it, it, it depends, of course, that depends. That depends um, uh, mostly uh, as I find out um, uh from um, how this school works so this director or principal is the most important uh, person in school and if uh, they trust each other and if they just like each other yes they talk but if there is just just work and there is uh, no re relationship then probably also they work but they work because they have to so they give the, each other the less information the less information is better and even when they when we started with this project uh, many teachers said oh great there's no teachers from my school then i will i could speak openly what what problems i have and what is hard for me because in my school i'm afraid of my work i afraid that i lose my uh, my job uh, i'm afraid of many many things and uh, yeah there is this is the true <laughs> Wow, okay. So th this is very interesting because it kind of adds um, a layer of difficulty for you guys as well. So once you, because you're doing all these workshops and uh, I, I, I see that you're starting this some, some um, like a community if you, if, you, if you like, right? So, so is that working for you? So how are you how are you what are you doing to actually sustain this community so once this once this trust is established with with one teacher and the other teacher from other schools and all that mm -hmm. i would say it's it was different in the beginning also because there's so many changes in in poland and in polish education we have this reform and then we had big strike in uh teacher strike in poland and i think it's 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 really changed that there's the teacher starts a lot of groups and uh, uh, they love Facebook. They <laughs> love Facebook a lot, but in a really good uh, good way. They create very nice projects on Facebook. Like my, my favorite one is um, invite me to my lesson. Uh, in the, the start during pandemic. 
uh, that you can just uh, you, you could just on uh, write on Facebook that hey I am very good in design thinking I can make some uh, lessons for your uh, kids in your school and uh, then another teacher just just invite uh, um, uh, this person and there's just one example of of very good cooperation so probably it's not just probably it's not us it's just the climate is changing a school climate is changing and uh, in my opinion uh, it, <laughs> bad and uh, and good um, uh, good stuff in this because it's changing these teachers are more uh, uh, they're they believe more in what they can and uh, what they should and how this education should work. Uh, but <laughs> they still in this fight mode now. Uh, so um, I know it's, it's not the answer of your, <laughs> for your question, because the answer is that we, we have this community, but it's very small because we have very small groups in our when projects. And then this, uh, this, uh, our teachers works with teachers in the field. I can say that, and in and normally they just um, find a, their own uh, own subject they really want to work. For example, we have these two mathematicians that start to work um, create group that work with with um, escape rooms, and they have like a lot of teachers, uh, like ten thousand or something in their group, and they work about the, and they create these escape rooms for everything, and uh, uh, so so but normally they just find this uh, one issue, one subject, one team that they really want to work and and they do it alone. We just <laughs> sometimes write to them. Uh, or invite them to uh, to some workshops, or invite them to um, conduct workshops for new uh, new uh, new teachers. So we just stay in touch. We <laughs> just send them e say send them emails, or sometimes just talk on the phone. But it's quite a small group. You have this. We have only three editions, so it's like 40, uh, 40 teachers now. Great. No, thanks. It, it's, it's, it is still kind of a beginning, you know, so it's even if it is a small community, I think it's, it's fabulous that you that you have that little community that you can start growing. So yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it works for us. Yeah. And uh, I hope also not, not only for us, it does work for this um, uh, education. Hi, Alexandra, um, Matilda, yeah. So the groups that I work with are paralegal advisors who do community training. Um, so it's actually a big group who um, are in a very big pool for very little financial resources that is available to them. Um, so we often have a problem even just organizing meetings um, because people can only do that when data is available. Um, so we've done some training using WhatsApp, um, but I was wondering if you had similar problems and how you've resolved it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if I understand good the, good the question. You ask uh, uh, how we uh, resolve financial problems, yes, and if we yeah. make this online. Yeah, we, we, when people uh, stay remotely and um, often have a problem dialing in or, yeah, how, how you cope with, with those sort of problems. Yes, um, um, uh, we had this problem <laughs> exactly that we start uh, uh, offline uh, this last um, uh, last edition, and then we uh, we just need to change it for uh, for online. And uh, we use uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams, in Poland in Polish schools. It's very very uh, popular. To use uh, Microsoft Teams, so we just uh, use this uh, this tool because we know that teachers will, will um, use it, and um, and 
it went very, very well because we just because normally we work on the weekends and we have this long workshops all two days for 10 hours per day but we know it's impossible to make it online so long then uh, so we make shorter uh, shorter works during the weekends and then told them that okay because we are meeting only three hours on saturday and three hours on sunday then you have this eight hour <laughs> to work uh, with your groups in time whatever you want and uh, and because teachers are more used to work online and used to work at home it it wasn't so um so hard to convince them to to do this and we have very, very nice uh, resources now. Uh, they're not ready yet, but uh, but we uh, they finished them. So uh, so yes, but we have one problem and about this um, this community problem. There are not so much group anymore. Uh, then and it's so much harder to. To convince them to share with their um, with their knowledge and with their um, I don't know experiences because they not know each other so well probably so yeah it works very nice with, with this hard effects with this open education resources not so well uh, with this uh, soft competences and with this uh, yeah cooperation sharing and so on so we are i don't have a good answer how to make it perfectly but we are uh, we are working on uh, um, on this and we have on this project we have very nice grant <laughs> that we can use it and it's very flexible and that's how wh why uh, uh, we could do this so easily i don't know if i answered your question Yes, you did. Thanks. Okay. And we also have a new participant who joined the session, Suba Das Molik. Yeah, Suba, if you if you can hear us, would you like to introduce yourself? You can either unmute yourself or you can post a message into the chat window. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, if there's no more questions about this, uh, I would like to invite you to some, some uh, share session. I can I call this? Um, but I need to open this Jamboard and also, uh, yeah, no. Give me a second. Just a second. Uh, maybe it's here. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Oh, you... sorry, I have this. Um... Okay, I, I'm now I'm really, uh, really close to what I want to do because now I want to share with you uh, um, this one. Um, yes. I will put this on the chat. This is Jamboard. I will put the, the link in the chat, okay? And you can go there just to... Um, our next step. I have some problem with my keyboard. Okay. And, but I also will share the screen so we'll see all um, mm -hmm. okay do you know jumper do you know how to uh, how to use it 
maybe I will just uh, explain shortly. Uh, on the left, you have this uh, tools. My favorite tools is Post-it. You can uh, just write something on it and put it here, like on uh, a whiteboard. It's, it works the same. So I would like just to talk about uh, talk about uh, about your experience in creation of OER. Uh, uh, do you create any with I don't know teachers or uh, librarians or uh, I don't know <laughs> who are working with or um, uh, and what kind of uh, OER if you create and. Um, yeah, probably this is this first uh, first question, and you can just write and put here, or you can write on chat, and I can put here on whatever you find the best way to communicate with me. It's fine. Um, I just want to say that on the Jamboard, um, I requested access to it because the link that I clicked um, it uh, shows that we have to request access. Oh, okay. So sorry. Sorry about me. this. Uh, probably it's, I hope it's easy to change. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Maybe, uh, do, would I, you like to have, because I was wondering, could we just talk about it? Uh, or would you like us to have a, would you like to? Yeah, you can a, also a, talk about this, of course, of course. And I also changed this, it should be, uh, uh, it should be okay right now, but yes, we can talk. Because we can, I mean, if you wanted to have a, a written record of the conversation, of course, you know, we can, we can, we can write on the, on the board, no problem. But I was just wondering. Um, no, uh, whatever you prefer. For me, it's I just uh, very curious what is your experience, and then I will be very curious what uh, you would like to create and so on. So uh, I, I I will be very glad just to hear uh, and just to talk with uh, to, to to you also. Okay, I can start if you want. So. Yeah. Uh, um, at the moment, so I, I work in higher education, I work in the University of Delft, and one of the main things I do in my work, I work as a learning developer, so I help teams of, um, of, of teachers and students in the university to create a, a MOOC, for example, uh, to create an online course, and it's, I find it very interesting what you're talking about, because uh, um, in our case, there has to be a lot of collaboration because if there is no collaboration, this is not going to happen, right? So, so we already kind of working in 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 teams from from the beginning, um, and our MOOCs are um, um, they we we have a partnership with with edX, so our MOOCs always run in edX uh, at least once. Uh, but we released the, the courses uh, on the Creative Commons license. Um, we move our courses directly from edX onto the open courseware platform here at the University of Delft. Um, but that's uh, the fact that we, that we do that, it helps us um, explain to our teachers uh, what is, uh, you know, what happens when you do things in the open or so if we say to our teachers you know you're this MOOC that we are producing together that we are working that we're designing together we're going to share it with the whole world so that helps us have kind of that discussion with um what does that mean what are the implications both us and to help other people reuse our materials or um what are the implications when you're actually designing the course itself so yeah, it's it's uh, it's great. Uh, it's, it's so that I feel lucky at listening to you and listening to to um, how you uh, how difficult um, it can be in, uh, for you to to actually uh, ask your teachers to collaborate. So I kind of feel in a way lucky that we st we start from the belief and from the it's a reality. If we 
if we don't collaborate, this this is not going to happen for us. So I think everybody understands that very well. Um, Naomi, I don't know what you think. Naomi and I work together. So. Yeah, I'd agree. I was just putting on the notes from um, kind of what you're saying about um, that collaboration. It does definitely require a lot of collaboration. Um, and it's great that we can um, have the course in edX and later on in the open courseware. Um, I think um, not all course teams, when they if they haven't um, developed a MOOC before, are aware of the licenses um, and what exactly that means for their content. Um, so sometimes I think the experience of creating an OER is explaining it to people like um, even TAs who are involved so they understand what, what exactly it means. Um, and yeah, I think collaboration definitely is a major part of it. Um, what I think is beautiful is that whatever is created can be modified or reused. Um, and some of our courses have um, different language translations. So some of the courses that are created originally in English are also in um, Spanish. And we also have um, some courses, not so many, but a few in Dutch. Um, one I think that's really nice is for younger children for programming. Um, so I think it, it just provides more access. So I think more access to people um, is, a, is a, one of the attractions about creating the OER because um, you know that more people can benefit from it in different languages as well. So that's my take, I think. Mm, yeah, thank you for this, because there is uh, two things I, I want to comment. One is translations. I think it's very important and it's something that uh, that I'm thinking a lot <laughs> because uh, mm, there's a lot of uh, OER in English and uh, for this uh, in primary education you just need to have uh, mm, materials in in in, uh, in Poland and in, in your own language so this translations is very important so when there are in English, English, but they're open. It's um, it's very very important for for us. Uh, it's not only for us. It's just very <laughs> important that they're like this. And um, uh, and one more thing that I do. Uh, yeah, this uh, online courses. It just, this is just a comment that in. Um, in higher education in Poland, the online courses are very, very uh, popular. And on Moodle and we have a lot of open uh, courses and it works very, very nice. Um, but in um, this high, high school or uh, primary education, not so much. The online courses are not so popular. We just started to think about this and how it, uh, how it could be used. So we, on, on this, we are just on the beginning. So. Uh, we are uh, now we are looking a lot how it works on this higher education and what we can use and uh, and just change to be okay for for this um, school education. So thank you for for this. Mm. Just maybe a little contribution from my side. I. So personally, as far as the creation of OER is concerned, uh, I think the extent of it is in relation to, let's say, presentations and different conferences when you are licensing your slide decks on the Creative Commons and making it all openly available, um, publishing uh, articles in open access journals, for instance, under open X, under Creative Commons licenses. So all of these de facto become open educational resources too. So there would be more the extent of involvement personally, uh, but, uh, as far as our organization is concerned, open education global, I mean, we do a lot of that kind of work in terms of motivating, encouraging people, organizations around the world to, to release or to produce or to release their educational resources openly. So that would be more of the sort of encouraging, motivating others, capacitating others to do so. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Igor, for this. Uh, Yes, uh, so, um, because we uh, <laughs> talking about this, we also uh, um, answered a little bit about 
this question, but it's very, very okay. So I think now just to put this question. So what is most important in creation? Um, uh, on this first slide, because I guess we uh, we just talk a lot about this uh, right, right now, what is <laughs> important. So probably it'd be easier. Just, no, it's impossible to make it this way. Oh, it's impossible, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because uh, um, I, I just want to uh, emphasize this question. Maybe we can just um, talk a little bit more about this importance. What is the most importance um, with creation and uh, in, in OER? I would say this collaboration and cooperation it is uh, very important, but um, maybe you have some uh, another uh, uh, thoughts about this i think if if i if i can come in for a second um, um i meant to ask you earlier and then it, we just i kind of lost my my chain of thought but um when we're talking about collaboration i think it's actually super important to to also involve students in the creation of of the oer mm -hmm. you know it doesn't if we just leave it as in, um, you know, I am the teacher, or I am the big professor, I'm telling you, this is what we're doing. What you know, it's it's. I think is we should encourage always to, um, you know, that the that that the students try and work in the open as much as they can as well. Um, so because if, even if you think about it in terms of. Um, sustainability right is if it's the students that are the students now are the ones who are going to be maybe potentially teaching later on or that can actually it, we we don't even have to stay with education we could pretty much talk about you know how how open can you be in your in your professional life for instance so so the the, the conversation needs to continue the, so if we exclude students from 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 this conversation, from the process of creating OER now, I think we are doing ourselves a, a massive um, disservice in a, in a way. Yes, I, I, I totally agree um, because of different things. One, because uh, um, uh, copyright law, it's very important to, uh, to teach uh, students how it works. And on OER, it's very easy to show how it works. And uh, so, so this is one thing. What, uh, and another thing, what I'm thinking, um, we, we are doing this um, by using design thinking. And I really, really like this method and it works pr pretty, uh, pretty nicely in our project because they're invited uh, to, uh, to use prototypes just uh, to, to make interviews and they're all the time in this uh, in this process uh, process and we have this um, this feedback from teachers that there is also a opportunity for them to just to talk to them what they like <laughs> what they want to do uh, what is important for them and so on and so on um, and this conversation this small digression but <laughs> We do this. Um, we had this um, very nice re research in Poland. Why school is boring? Because school is boring, and why <laughs> students think so that the school is boring. And uh, to make this very long research very short, they said because nobody talks to us in school. They just teach us, and they just want some answers sometimes. But they're not. We don't have really. Uh, um uh, conversation in school so this is one of the opportunities to to have this uh, this really um nice and true conversation with uh, with students okay do we have something uh, more uh, about this, what is important in uh, in creation uh, uh, OER for you? Okay. Um, uh. Or um, hmm? what do you think in terms of um, having, so because we're creating something, uh, 
what what really makes it an OER is then what happens to this resource that you created, right? So how about, um, or what do you think, what is the situation in terms of, so, so I've created something and I now want to share it. So where do I share it? Is that um, something, for mm -hmm. example, that you would consider super important or relevant, not necessarily super important, sorry. <laughs> so see, it's like, yeah. So we tell, sometimes we say to people, and now you go and share, right? Uh, but then like, how, how do I do it? Where do I put it? All that kind of conversations. Yes, we have this uh, this consternation like all the time, <laughs> all the time, uh, in uh, in our conversation with teachers because in Poland we don't have this one platform, and I'm still don't know if it's okay or it's not so much. I have many thoughts about this, and um, I I really not not sure which way is the best. But no, we don't have now, and. Um, and this is a problem uh, because then I, we need to explain it doesn't matter how you share but when you say it doesn't matter then still we don't have any um, nice clue for uh, for these teachers um, and then okay when they put the, it in I don't know in uh, school website then they are afraid that nobody will see this work and so how it made more um, more visible for uh, for community for another teachers and so on so on so the other other uh, conversation in this project and in OER is promotion and we also uh, not talking uh, only about design and about uh, methods and about uh, content but also about the promotion of um, and how to promote this um, this materials yeah so this is uh, this is quite uh, quite important I don't know do, do you have in your countries this one platform for OER uh, for uh, um, schools Oh, you, you cut me there because I'm not, even if I live in the Netherlands, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. So um, okay, this okay. is embarrassing. I would- oh, it, No, it, no, not at all. No, no. <laughs> no. If I may interject there, I think there is still the Wikivice that is active. Uh, yeah, yeah a... exactly. There was, there's, there's, a, there's the Wikivice, there's the Guinness, uh, Guinness Meccans, oh gosh, this is really bad. I forget what it's now. But what I wanted to say is like, uh, um, what I always find extraordinary is in this kind of conversation, it's like how, and I know it is important, and I know obviously each university, each school wants to highlight what it is, and show, you know, this is what we're doing and show the whole world, and so everybody is very keen on creating maybe their own platform, their own repository, right, and I, that's, that's totally cool, I don't, I don't have anything against that, but what I'm always saying uh, you do not have to um, depend on, on your school or your university if you wanted to share this. There's a hundred million different ways of, of sharing things. Uh, you, okay, starting with, you may have your, your community um, in Facebook, for example, you might be keeping a blog, you might just use a service that is already available like SlideShare or you know, depending on what it is. So I'm always in, in two minds about this, as in when somebody wants to share, um, the, you know, you always think, okay, so my, I, th there must be a place in my university where, where I can share or in my school, but sometimes that place does not exist. So it's more for me um, to try and, and show people the many other places where that are open to, um, you know, to everyone um, in the world in order to kind of share whatever it is that you want to share. And I know this is also controversial because we get into, okay, but if I create something, do I own the copyright? Is it my university? Is it not my university? So it's, I know it's more complicated like this, but what I'm always trying to do is how, um, how do we overcome these barriers rather than throw more barriers in the way to somebody who wants to share it's like how we can actually help them and say okay this is very simple uh, or this could be very simple even if it's not and we do have one question from the audience on how do you quality check oers Yes, I can answer for my project, but uh, I will say it one more time. It's a small one. We had not a lot of uh, OERs because it's just uh, an example. And we just uh, invite some experts 
because uh, we in our organization we know um, copyright law in Poland and we know uh, accessibility so we can check this and um, and probably uh, and also we know um, educational methods and that's what we can do but then we when now we are uh, working on uh, climate crisis and i'm not specialist <laughs> in this subject so i invite uh, gerd who, who works uh, work <laughs> in greenpeace and she just check this um, this materials to, uh, to just to have this um, to, just to have um, have this um, sureness that it's uh, it's okay. But I will say, okay, in a small project, we, yes, we have also this, the graphic designers and so on because it's it's like our our child. <laughs> it's just an example. But I would say if if it's oh you are for, you are a teacher and you make some materials for for you or for your um, colleagues and maybe you won't just put it on some uh, social media or whatever i would say it's okay if there's some uh, mistakes it happens you can just even write this down and it's just material that you used in on your lesson and uh, just check it before you you will use this before uh, next time one more time, uh, because when you, I, I know it's very important to have high quality OERs, I agree, but also it's very important to make them and not to be afraid that everybody will judge you and will um, replace your mistakes or so on. So I'm here <laughs> very for openness for this, to be open and say, okay, I, I made it. I'm not 100 sure if there is no mistakes, maybe there are some spell mistakes or whatever. Um, just check it before you use it, and that's it. Uh, okay. Mm, so, uh, We have this uh, next question. We can try to answer this in our group. Why not? Uh, what kind of OER we need or you need, and what uh, um, uh, what kind of OER you would like to create? But maybe uh, do I have this? No, because. Uh, also, I would like uh, you to think about this, um, I don't know, this perfect OER or even maybe impossible OER, this, what you have in your dreams, <laughs> this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, um, of materials. What do you think that would be so, so nice to have? Um, okay, I'm gonna come in first. Um, it's uh, it depends. Uh, it depends a lot. For me, um, what I would like to see ideally is an OER out there that is available under the most open license possible, so that I can actually. Which um, is most open? I'm just open. curious. Sorry? So, so like, for example, like CC BY, or you could even leave it in okay. the public domain, you know? So something oh, okay. that you <laughs> that you can really uh, let go of and see what happens. But, uh, you know, but that's, that's, that's me. It doesn't matter if it is, if it is an open textbook, if it is um, a photograph, if it is, you know, whatever it is that you, that you want to create in the first place. Um, I think that it's still kind of, uh, um, you know, it's like uh, we still have this fear of um, we create something, but um, we don't always know how to let go of what we created and let others use it and see what happens. Um, uh, so yeah, so in my ideal world, that's what I would like to. That's what I would like to see. I see that you are not the, the only one because the second comment from Sapa is uh, quite 
similar. <laughs> so it, the, the perfect one is this very, very open. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I, I always say, say something because I have this idea that we have also this materials, but my like my dream uh, oh yeah, is more like a tool. I would love to have this open tool that could, I don't know, translate. I, I have this translating now <laughs> in my mind, but it could translate uh, some materials and it could be open and it's very nice, like, um, like plugin or something like this, it would be very nice. Uh, but um, uh, that's that's what I think right now. And um, and also, I would just like very <laughs> like it's maybe it's not material, but also I said this this uh, cooperation between higher education and um, um, school education because I don't know in Poland this higher education so much farther uh, in openness than uh, than schools and probably the schools could learn so much from them but uh, it would be so so good to have this um, this cooperation um, and just to learn There's a very nice comment there from from Suba that um, that is also on the on your Jamboard. So I don't know, Suba, if you wanted to come in and and elaborate a little bit more, maybe. No, we can't hear. The comment that she added into the chat is the user uh, should have scope to contribute. And actually, I would agree on that because most of the online courses, um, the space is not meant or there is no actual space for the students to change the content um, in a typical MOOC type setting. Um, maybe in, with another tool, it's there, but it's not um, not necessarily that the, the students in the course can um, make comments everywhere in the course, or they can do edits. It seems like that's one piece that's missing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I really agree, but also we need very good tools for this. How to make this uh, at least useful for students and also um, uh, uh, e useful and easy and that this course will be uh, also um, um, still okay and still working. So I, I think this, this is the, the question, how to manage this, uh, this situation. And that's also uh, something that you, that then you need really um, uh, work on this course like all the time. So, uh, so it's uh, uh, to make it uh, in high quality, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just just thinking right now, um, how it could to works to be um, to be okay. Maybe you have some experiences like this to that you have this uh, really open courses and you work on such uh, course. Okay, but the idea is it's uh, it's great. 
Thank you for this. Okay. Uh, do we have some more comments here? Okay, and you even try this. So uh, <laughs> congrats. It's, it sounds like a lot of works, but I, I think it's worth it to, to try to do this. Um, Okay, so I just uh, want to show you uh, something. Um, or do we have some more comments on the chat? Uh, no, I'm just welcoming the okay. people who are joining okay. and making sure that they have the link to the um, document. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, so I um, just want to show you something. This is the... Uh, canvas that we are using in uh, in our project we are using in polish and uh, we also change it sometimes but i just want to show that uh, you that this how we are working with teachers is also important for us that we are just uh, uh, thinking about this tools because we then we want them to think about uh, uh, about tools that they are using and we want uh, today we want um, fill it out because it's uh, uh, it's a lot of work uh, so um, so it's not for uh, for today but I just want to uh, to show that we have this that we are really think about this target group and for whom are this uh, this uh, materials and how they gonna be used and what resources they need to to create them and um, um, uh, and why they are created them and what uh, the students will learn from this uh, this materials and so on and so on um, yes i i will share it to to this i i should not uh, i share the pdf um but uh uh, to this, you mean to the canvas or to the uh, to this uh, jamboard? It, uh, yeah, I, I should the PDF. It's uh, I don't have it in a different format, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I hope that uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's another uh, conversation about uh, <laughs> which format is open, and probably PDF. It's not the one <laughs> the most open. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm reading the chat and <laughs> but, right, don't get me started. Yes. Um, I will try to make it editable. Yes, I think I should. Now I really think I should do this. So <laughs> I will try to do this, Igor, and put on this uh, because it's very nice and I also change it a lot. I make it in. Um, Canva, come. Do you know Canva? This uh, this um, uh, this um, website is very nice. <laughs> uh, so yes, that's that's what I. Uh, my, sorry, I lost my um, thoughts. Okay, and now it's the time when we uh, um, could start our work. But I think maybe I don't know if we you can use. Uh, um, cameras but i will try i will try one exercise just to show you um, how we work with our teachers because uh, we have some uh, some ideas this uh, canvas is one thing and another we make this exercise when we uh, um, oh maybe i won't tell you just try to make i don't know do you have some uh, paper and something to write in by your side somewhere you can just write me on chat. Are you ready for this kind of exercise? I would love if it could be on paper and not on a desktop, or is it possible for us to make it? OK, let's try. So uh, I would like you to uh, uh, to draw your 
perfect school. Like three minutes and draw of your imaginary perfect school. No writing, drawing. <laughs> Don't worry, just drawing. It's easier, you know, so much easier to draw something. Okay, let's try. I'm drawing too. Also, if some uh, of you needs a little bit a perfect school, we are drawing our perfect school, how you imagine uh, how it would look like. Also, if somebody needs a little break, it's like we have three minutes, four minutes break and drawing at the same time. It's multitasking now. So, Okay, do you have your pictures and can I uh, see them if there is anybody who want to show picture of perfect school? Can you see? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. It looks almost like mine. <laughs> I will show you later. Do you want to say something about this? Yeah, actually this is the uh, ideal perfect school created by uh, Ravindranath Tagore in Shantiniketan. You know, it's, uh, that you study uh, in the midst of nature, under the tree, you know, not confined in a building. So the physical openness is also there, not just open curriculum, but the physical openness is also there. Yeah, I love this idea. Yes, thank you very much. I'm trying to um, show you mine, but because of the, you can see, oh yeah, no, can you? <laughs> for a bit closer, yeah, for a second. I saw it for no, a wait, second. I need, then... to, I need to kind of stop the, the virtual background, so. Um, okay. Let's see if I can. Ah, one second. Um, I th I just thought it was showing to you because. Oh, can you see it? Can you see it now? Um, it is. I, I wanted to show it because it's very similar. It doesn't look very similar, but it is similar. So what I have is lots of trees, and there's the. <laughs> There's the house and the kids are happy and smiling and the sun is shining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. So it's, but I like, um, but I like, so in connecting to, to Suva's um, school, it's also kind of this idea kind of being in the open, uh, yeah. you know, in nature. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Somebody else? Um, I'm keen to share mine. It's amazingly like everybody else's. Um, you can That's see. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have one mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Matilda. Okay, so. I will show you also mine. It's, you know, it's the same picture, so you won't be surprised because we have also this tree and these kids and they're doing what they want and talking and yeah. <laughs> okay, last chance to show a picture. Okay, uh, so uh, the reason we uh, um, draw this uh, 
um, this perfect school is also to have fun and i like to this on uh, this online um workshops because it's you know the occasion to draw with your hand and use pen or pencil or whatever and so different than on computer but also i do this with teachers to tell them okay now you are an art author you are an artist you have this uh, this picture and it's yours and this is the beginning of conversation about uh, uh, copyright law and about uh, creative commons and about uh, <laughs> how they would like to share this uh, uh, this picture and why in this way on another way and then uh, we um, normally make this this line from the uh, normally we didn't start with talking about no oh, okay i will put a cc by because they don't know this, but they they just uh, explain. Okay, I would like to share this with uh, uh, with everybody, but I don't want them to make money, for example. And then we have this uh, uh, sorry. Uh, then we have this uh, this uh, this conversation. Uh, uh, about uh, about sharing and uh, about how, how it fun is to share and how 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 fun was to see these pictures and if you share that everybody would would have this fun and so on so, uh, so thank you for this uh, for this exercise and you are excellent uh, in drawing and I'm amazed that we have the same uh, one mind and we think about school in the same way okay I don't know if we have any uh, uh, and the power, but maybe in this after this short break, we can just use another 10 minutes for thinking about uh, our imaginary uh, open resource. Uh, but we, of course, create one group because we are one great group here, and we can figure out you know, it's hard. I don't know if it's possible <laughs> now what kind of open education resource we could create together as a group as with, with our different skills and different backgrounds and this higher education and schools and uh, and also um, uh, uh, as Igor said uh, this um, um, this resources from conferences we can try <laughs> What do you think? Is it possible? I can't hear anything. So, but I think everything everything is possible. So, for whom we could create this uh, this uh, open education resources? What do you think? <laughs> That's very nice idea, Igor wrote that I could create, <laughs> yes, I could create <laughs> this version, but I was trying to think about uh, what we could create together as a group. So you, you suggest that I would make it editable and that you will translate it to your languages, something like, you know, I want this end. This is nice. Sorry that I just this climate change, but it's so uh, close to me right now. <laughs> I will copy it here, maybe.
I would tell you, I know it's, uh, don't worry, it's hard and I know it's also very, very long um, uh, on the computer. So I will just tell you that this is the part when, when we start this part with our teachers, it's like the hardest part and it's always, everybody is so confused and they, it's chaotic and it's it's not easy on offline with people there now. <laughs> so uh, online, right, like this, it's even when, when it just, you know, uh, uh, just for a workshop. I know it's it's very hard to, uh, to figure it out. So don't, uh, don't be surprised. Uh, um, so I will also. Uh, what so, is, sorry, um, Alexander. So, so can you explain to us like how you do this with your teachers? So pretty much it's like exactly, but you do not give them any examples beforehand or see what I mean? It's, it's just to kind of give us a bit more context maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, Normal uh, examples what uh, OER looks or examples what they should could make. We make some. Uh, we give them examples of ready OERs. Yes, but normally not in the same subject because uh, right now, for example, in Poland there is not so much open education resources about uh, climate changes uh, or, or climate crisis. Um, so we just uh, show them what what these open education resources are. But as you know, it could be anything <laughs> that it's open uh, so that's why it's very confusing for them and uh, and this is the part when we are just want to uh, mm, know more what they want to do and how they could match match together and uh, so we, we probably normally we make this post-it sessions they write, they will have one turn, they write what they want, what they want. We just make it in few groups. And of course, there's still not enough. And uh, five people are in four groups and one person is in, it, there is in no group and so on and so on. So make another session. Uh, then still they write in this uh, these groups what they want more or uh, what they want to change and so on and so on. And th it took like two or three hours. And after that, everybody normally are happy with their groups and their ideas and they could start to uh, to work. But no, no we are, uh, it's very hard for, for teachers and probably not only for teachers that we are not telling them what we want from them. We are not doing this. We just, they, they think, you know, some materials, but when they ask what kind of materials, for whom, and so on, we, we say, we don't know, you need to know what you want to, to do. Uh, and you, you, it's a very nice question because it's, it's quite an important part in this project that uh, we really want them to, to, to feel that they are this, their project, their materials, but not ours. We are there just to facilitate and uh, okay, give them time and space. Oh, that's great. So, um, so if I can still ask another question. So, um, so imagine I say, okay, so I'm a teacher. So I, 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 whatever I teach social sciences, for example. So I'm going to be thinking about my own class. So I could say, okay, for whom? Well, it's for my students and they are normally, I don't know, 12 year olds, for example. And what type of a resource I could say, okay, well, I want to create a, res a nice resource, which is photographs and texts and maybe exercises about one of the sustainable development goals, right? But can you say a little bit more about that last post-it, the, the orange post-it when you say plus of creating together? So advantage, I, I'm reading it as an advantages of working together or is it? Um, yeah. Is yeah, normally, <laughs> that's, uh, normally we are not using this one. It's just for us. <laughs> or oh, we are okay. just talking about this uh, after this uh, this process because it's too it's too complicated in this first part. Because when you said, okay, I want to make some uh, uh, some materials from for our student my, my students, um, it could be okay. But then uh, you are not working alone, so you need to find another teacher in this group or teachers that want they have the same similar class or similar subject or similar 
something. So that's why it's so so complicated. And on this this plus of creating this yes advantages of creating together. Uh, this is something that we are talking normally after they create this uh, this materials. What they get from from this uh, cooperation. Ah, so but so how does it? Sorry, so how does it work? Do do you get the teachers to pitch their ideas to each other and look? And then, so say, okay, so I go back to the same idea. So I teach social sciences, 12 year olds. Uh, I would like to teach this, who can help me? Is that how it works or? Yeah, uh, something like this. We uh, do this, uh, we have like two different parts of this uh, uh, workshop. First, first is this, um, this taking from uh, design thinking and we, we just make it, just to show how to create, how it, they could create materials, but, uh, and they make prototypes. And I mean, many times they make prototypes before they decide on the, the end of the subject. But during this, in the, they just develop, they just um, divide it to groups, whatever, uh, however, whatever they want. And this time when they have, the, when they have time to talk to each other, what they really want to do, and they make some prototypes just to to practice them, but they then they know uh, because it's a small group, <laughs> as I said. Uh, then they have this time to know what uh, each teacher what to want to do and so on. So on. And then we have this post post-it uh, session when they write it down on this post-its and everybody uh, um, read it and then just put another idea to post it that was write it or make another post it and so on and so on. And we just try to make it less and less and less. And normally we end it on four or three or four um, materials for this 15, to, to, uh, this year we have 12 and three, uh, 12 teachers and three materials. Um, yeah, it's complicated. It's a little bit like magic also, I guess, <laughs> because um, uh, because there are so many ideas normally, uh, but the important is that they need to have time to talk to each other, and we like this make it uh, during some another exercise just they talk to each other, and then they have this time to write it down on um, on on this uh, on posters. I don't know it's more clear. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, that is okay. I think. Um, um, oh, this. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so. So, and uh, I just uh, explain you the rest of the um, uh, the rest of. Uh, the project, how it works. They will make this open education resources during this uh, this workshops in four weeks, and then they put wherever, as we talk about this sooner, where, wherever they want, and also uh, because we don't have this platform, and also we uh, help them to promote uh, this um, this materials. Normally, we also put uh, some. Right, sorry, so write some um, some articles to um, uh, to press, mostly uh, for teachers, and put it into the internet and uh, some uh, websites uh, about education in Poland, and uh, and it works. And we have from this last year, this materials are very very useful and very used by teachers, and this is. This is very important for for our participants, for our participants that this uh, this materials are live. But this is something that we really need to work on. We don't have so many so many uh, feedbacks that this materials are are uh, remixed and used in another ways. So this is something that we talked about perfect years that we didn't go there yet like in perfect way this is something <laughs> to, to improve in uh, uh, in this project and then we have this uh, this uh, teacher networks and we just stay in touch together 
Okay, so I guess that's it. Thank you very much for, uh, or you, maybe you have some more questions. Okay, so thank you very much for, uh, for this workshop. It was very nice to talk to you and to talk uh, a little bit more about uh, Yes, I have examples, but they're in Poland. Sorry, I, I wrote this uh, question on um, chat. Matilda asked, asked, do they have any examples of what the teachers created? I have it, I have it there in Polish, but we're going to um, also translate it in English in this year. So uh, probably um, quite soon. And we will going to put it on. On, on this side, I can, now it's quite empty, but it won't be so much. I, I can put this uh, also on this um, session uh, information, this, uh, this link. Uh, the type of resources. Okay, yes. So the, <laughs> there are changes, different types. We on the in this first edition, we have websites, two websites, uh, one about cooperation math lessons, very nice, and also about some uh, tools, but also just um, lesson scenarios, just or maybe not just, but because they're very very nice lesson scenarios. So it's just uh, PDF. And the fourth one, the fourth one was uh, quite complicated because there was some videos, some interactive posters on them. Access, they're very nice because they create access for this logarithm. And this access just, I'm not good in mathematics, but this, this access just um, uh, shows some calculations on logarithm uh, and, and presentations. Uh, yeah, so that was on mathematics. And uh, last uh, year we have also some websites and some um, some Google Docs, some documents uh, about art and how to use art at school. Uh, it's very very nice. And this year we have we don't have yet that this, but <laughs> we will have some. Um, um, also some school we have something like like school innovations i don't know um, educational innovations or right? educational innovation and this is something that if you want to change your pro school program you can use this innovation and go to uh, to your headmaster and said okay i have this innovation and this year we create this and so we have this type of, uh, of document it's very nice because it's so useful for teachers because it's good for them they can um, uh, use it to some extra points and some uh, uh, in uh, in their work, but also it's very nice for kids because it's something different. So we have this educational innovation this this year, and I'm very happy about this. We have game card game also about uh, climate crisis, and in also in editable uh, uh, format. So <laughs> here we are okay in this in this one and uh, and this third one it's like some quizzes and it's it's not finished yet. So but there is really different. Yes, you heard well. We have this and this, uh, but it, this card will be so cool and still in Polish. But maybe somebody would like to translate it. Uh, yeah. And because they'll be very nice about crisis, crisis and yeah. Okay. Um, so, so as you say, we we really don't say anything. What kind of uh, uh, materials it should be? There, I have this idea that I would like to, uh, to try to invite them to create uh, online courses, but I'm not sure. It's not, it, is it not too big for this small? Uh, project to, to make it, but it would be very nice to have some more online courses for um, schools. Okay, some more questions. Okay. 
Okay, so one more time, thank you very much uh, for joining me in this morning and talk about uh, open education and how to create resources with teachers, but probably not only teachers, all librarians also very like this project and participate. So, um, yes, I think that's it. And thank you very much, Alexandra. It was, this was really great and it was fun also. <laughs> so thank you. you I didn't saw your picture. Yeah, I will, you just uh, yeah. write about this. <laughs> The moment it's all rights reserved when you send the editable version of your canvas i'm gonna send you my my photo okay do we have a deal? okay okay <laughs> <laughs>